Hi guys, welcome along. Nigel here, Nigel's Modeling Bench, and this is part 10 of the uh, Tamiya 116th RC, RC Sherman build. Um, you join me midway through painting the, or prime, actually priming the parts. These are the metal suspension arms. And it wasn't until I got the primer on that I noticed, if you look down here, you can see on this edge, if I can get it to focus, we've got like a casting mark there where it's been broken off. Sorry about the nails, guys, they're gross. Um, but yeah, the casting mark there. So what we've got to do is get rid of that. So go with a nice flat file. Now I'm not going to push down. I'm just going to let the file do the work because I don't want to go gouging into the surrounding metal work. Well, I'm going to have to blend it, but I don't want to go filing it too much away. So there we go. Flatten the, flatten the file out, get it on the surface. And then once you've got that, you come with it. This is a 400 grit Matador sanding stick. An Infini one. They're my new favourite sticks. You come along and just sand that out and then I'm just going to run up and down the edge just to break the edge and there we go that um that gets rid of that in fact it needs a little bit more work there's a bit more still there and there we go so now I can get these back out in the garage and prime them again okay so there we are you can see that's that's removed that all right, so I'll do that on the on the rest of them, and then um, and then we'll be back ready to start doing some green painting, I think, or some more assembly. And as if by magic, there we go, all painted up, all um, gone off. It's been painted about eighteen hours ago now, so um, all ready now for just um, sort of denibbing, flatting back, and um, getting ready for some green paint. So I've got a thousand grit stick here. I'm just going to lightly rub that over there, just to cure, just to um, smooth that one off. And same on there and again what we're doing I'll be painting all around the edges and stuff then I'm going to bolt them on and then I'll paint the whole hole completely in one go um, these tubes I, as you know I stacked them one on top of the other on, on top of the other so they need to be just lightly denibbed um, best thing to do with them is a bit of scotch bright <clears throat> like so so that's that one done. Uh, these shock absorber parts, again, we're going to use scotch brown on these. So we can just literally go over them and just lightly just go over it. And all we're doing is just, if you've got any sort of dry overspray or sort of dry areas where the paint feels a little rough, it just literally just takes that off. You're not, you're not trying to sand it down, as it were. You're just trying to denib it. And the same on here, what we'll do is we'll just stroke across here gently and just just remove any texture that may be on there like so okay and then we also need to make sure because this stuff is hairy as it were you will get hairs and fluff on there so make sure it's not on there uh, when you paint it these bits here if you remember I took these out while they were um while they were going off and sanded these bits down flat so that's looking lovely so we can just denib that and again here just basically just go over them um, the same with these we can go around in circles on them and just lightly denib them these bits here again we'll just rub over the outside you know you don't need to make too much fuss about this it's just a case of, of just getting rid of any um, dry patches of paint because you'll sometimes find if you have got a dry area where it's overspray then it may not be stuck down properly and then it you put top coat on it and it just comes off so you know it's good to get it smooth preparation with painting it's not about the painting it's about the preparation um, it's pa good painting is all about 95% preparation so in my opinion so I'm gonna go on and rub these down because you really don't want to watch me do all that and then um, I'll come back once it's done and we'll get some painting done right a bit of an interlude here um, I've been obviously sanding everything and denibbing it all and I've noticed that on these suspension arms they all have an ejector pin mark here and it's on the same side on all of them so basically I'm going to end up with one half of my suspension displaying a ejector pin mark so I'm going to get rid of it now for this I'm going to use this product here this is by a company called Mr Hobby if you're new to the hobby you won't have heard of this it's called Mr Surfacer this is the 1000 you can get different grades I've done a complete video on Mr Surfacer and it's a product that I love and I use it a lot um, and it's fantastic for filling stuff like this and it's fantastic for filling basically around areas where you know where you you have detail and stuff 
like if you like on that Titanic if you have to do some filling work around where the superstructure joins the hull you can use this um, in that gap let it go off and then just rub it away with an alcohol soaked swab or a thinner soaked swab and you're, you're away um, <clears throat> so you don't have to do any sanding so that way it pr protects it saves you rubbing away all the um, the lovely rivet detail you've got on there the raised rivet detail so um, what I'm doing here as you can see is just dabbing it in and you might wonder why I'm doing all of them the reason I'm doing all of them is half of them the ejector pin mark will face inwards and half of them it will face out so when this dries I can pick the best ones and have them as facing out and the ones that look worse I can have them as facing in and as you can see what I'm doing I'm putting like a a raised droplet in there so that basically as it dries back it shrinks so as it shrinks back it will form something a little more level and then I'll have the minimum of sanding to do in that area and then we'll have this one little area that won't have primer on it now the unfortunate thing is I'm gonna to have to leave this for a few hours to dry before I can sand it but I can get on with something else um, this is one of the problems when you get to the painting stages on a model the, the video that you see that's about half an hour long can take me six or seven days so you know and it is literally like that so rather than put out a load of five minute videos um, it's it's best to just you know film it and stop it and film it and stop it and film it and stop it so there we go that's that done um, so we're ready to go with them and I don't know if I can see it on one you can see on that one it started to shrink back already it's almost become level so what we'll do we'll let those go off and then I'll sand them back uh, the other thing is with this Mr. Surfacer I never bother cleaning the brush I just wipe the brush off and then use this brush for Mr. Surfacer because as soon as you put it back in there it melts what's left on this so you don't have to waste your your thinners and your brush cleaners and stuff cleaning the brush you can just um just not bother so we'll get these out of the way here we are this is part 10 isn't it so uh I think in part 10 what we'll do is we'll concentrate on the shock absorbers because because I need to wait for those to dry so when we look here in the instructions you can see what it's telling you if you remember it told us to use rubber cement I'm not going to I've put those plastic parts in there so I can use ordinary cement and then I'm going to go around with some super glue just to, to f sort of fill the seam between this part and this part um, we also need to build these up so I'm going to epoxy those on now we've got these plastic parts on the sprues here <clears throat> so you can see what's going to happen is this metal tube is going to glue into there like so so what I think I'll do is I'll dip them in some epoxy and then just glue them on like so um, and then these here there's one I took the other one off the sprue didn't I but they are um, they're going to fit in I've got one here when I prepared earlier blue Peter style and they are going to go literally in those holes like that in there and obviously like I said I use poly cement and then once I've got them all done I can get them all lined at the same angle and then I go around with um, super glue to take care of that gap that's in there between them I've also got some mold seam to clean up first so I'm going to get these off the sprue and get them cleaned up and then we can get those glued in and then we can look at getting this this bit here done and then we'll look at getting some painting done okay moving forward cleaning up parts all well, this is all cleaned up now and all ready to go um, and I've noticed that when we put these these volute springs on you've got like a big hole showing there let's see if I can get it in there see this hole showing there that's why I look, I look some um, some real suspension online and that is um, that is actually part of the molding to prevent shrinkage what what happens when you mold plastic parts if you have a thin section and then right next to it you have a thick section like this you will get um, shrinkage so rather than have shrinkage what they've done they've put a, um, a hole in the back to reduce the actual mass of plastic in that area now obviously these don't matter because they're going to be covered by these tubes and you won't see them 
But these, where the spring goes, or the fake spring, um, you're going to see it. So what I've decided to do is fill it up with some plastic, as I've done here. And if you get your sprue, your sea sprue, um, the diameter of the plastic at the end here, here, okay, next to the um, next to one of your return rollers, which, you, which shouldn't be on there now, um, that is the perfect diameter. So basically what we can do is come along with some, well, we can put it in first. So what I'm going to do is get a, a coarse sanding stick and I'm going to sand the end flattish, okay, and then just push that in there push it all the way home it goes it's nice and tight and then we can take our cutters and cut it off okay so now we've got that left like that take some of our Tamiya extra thin and brush that in okay and I'll do this one as well and we can just leave that to dry um, so once again what we do come along the sanding stick just sand the end flat so that it's going in as far as you can get it you know it's got it's going into the bottom of the hole and not just making like a point so push that in it goes in nice and tight take your cutters make sure you don't cut that pin off that locates the spring and cut that off like that and then sorry I'm saying Tamiya Extra Thin you guys might not know what I'm talking about this is the this is the Tamiya Extra Thin I talked about before this is the extra thin quick setting this is normal extra thin and this is just a Tamiya plast uh, plastic um, Tamiya Extra Thin bottle but I got plastic weld in it plastic weld is um, it's glue here so um so there we go so that's basically what I'm doing and I'm just brushing this in just gonna put some in there and the capillary action will pull it in around the gap. The other way you could do it is to sand this flat. Okay, come along here, put a drop of extra thin in the hole, and then push your sprue in. Okay, and then you can cut it off like so. All right. So I'll go on and get the rest of these done. Let's put some glue in there. Push that in. When I'm cutting it, it's, it's coming off nice and flat now, so that's good. Put some glue in there. Push that in. Cut it off. And I'm going to do all of them again, like I said before, and then I can pick the best best ones because obviously only half of them, because they go like, they kind of go like this. Only half of them are going to face out. We can pick the best ones to face out. So there's twelve of them to do. So give yourself a bit of time. Push it in, like so. Get it in nice and tight, and then it off all right right while they're drying we can go on and put these oil reservoirs into our shock absorbers so again I'm going to use my Tammy extra thin and I'm going to put a nice drop in there and then just push the reservoir in give it a little nudge and a twist around try and get it sort of as square as you can looking at it that way and that way okay and then what we'll do is we'll get them all done and then we'll try and get, make sure they all look the same. So we'll put a drop of glue in there. And if you're watching this and you haven't watched the previous part, and you're wondering how I'm managing to glue this in there. I've put a plastic insert inside that shock absorber. So that's how I'm managing to glue a plastic part to what looks like a metal part using plastic cement. glue in there just position that like so
and that one can go in there like that and then what we can do is get them all look at them all end on and make sure we've got them all roughly the same and the beauty of this because we've used plastic cement that will now cure and then any little bits of tweaking and stuff we want to do we can do afterwards now what I am going to do is make sure I've got them right this way because I don't really want to go twisting them once they're um, once they're cured but tweaking them like that would be fine and then what we'll do once they're assembled in suspension units we can put all the suspension units next to each other make sure they all look the same they're all stood up vertical they're not leaning in and out of each other they're all like this correct and then we can um, run a drop of super glue around them <clears throat> just to just to give them that final little seal in between the uh, the reservoir and the shock absorber body so there we go and the other thing you can do with this tammy extra thin if you have sanding marks like i've got here okay you can come on with your extra thin and you don't want a soaking wet brush but you do want some glue on there and you can come along i've got something on the brush there it's a bit weird you can come along <clears throat> and brush the extra thin in like this it's still on there i don't know what it is oh it's a piece of um fluff from the scotch bright that's what that is and like on here you can just paint the glue on like that and leave it it's also a good way of hiding um seam like uh, seat not seam lines but mold lines you know where you get the mold line on the part you can just when you finish sanding you'll see if you watch my other videos you'll see i use all these techniques on pretty much everything i do and um it's just a good way of hiding sanding marks seam lines all sorts of bits and pieces and you don't want to be brushing it too long you just want to be putting it on brush it around and walk away put it on brush it around walk away I'll show you what happens now if you keep brushing what will happen is you will end up with a really rough finish okay you can see on there now it's getting rougher and rougher and rougher as the glue dries out you can see there now we've got a, a pretty rough finish on there if you do get that and you want to get rid of it just get some more glue on the brush and just brush that out while the glue's wet okay so there's another little tip for you guys okay so we've got these bits of plastic rod in here and it's time to clean them up and i've got a fresh brand new blade here nice and sharp and what i'm going to do is just lay the blade on the plastic and just run across and just shave away the top of that sprue while the glue is still slightly soft and just shave it away so that it's pretty much flat same again here just come in and gently go across and obviously being careful not to cut that pin off we need that for the the fake spring location in fact it also acts as a real spring location i think okay and, and this is a technique you can apply to any scale model or any radio control model or whatever if you want to fill in a hole piece of sprue stick it in the hole glue it in job done okay and if you notice i'm doing this while the glue is still slightly soft so the plastic is still slightly soft and if you are a youngster doing this perhaps get an adult to do it be very careful not to cut yourself because if the knife suddenly goes then you could end up stabbing yourself on the finger you could go that way but it's a lot more difficult um, and also the other thing to remember is if your knife is blunt put a new blade in because there's nothing more dangerous than a blunt blade doing something like this you will definitely cut yourself because a blunt blade where you'll push and push and all of a sudden poof, you'll go and that's it you'll cut yourself so 
just shaving it off like this without cutting into the parent material keep the blade clean there we go the other way you could do it is to scrape it you come along with this and scrape it across like so but um that's the safer way i prefer to cut it like that i mean if there's a good point we could finish it by scraping it actually in there cut that one and I must say guys I must say thank you I've had some um, really really nice comments from you guys um, I'm not going to repeat them because it would sound like I'm just trying to blow my own trumpet but uh, yeah um, and I've also had someone sort of promoting another channel on my site I don't mind that as in as much as if the other person's gonna promote my channel on their site so you know it needs to be a two-way thing really um, you know I'd hate to think that my channel is being used to promote someone's site that and that other site in the background they're saying that you know I'm doing this wrong I'm doing that wrong I'm I'm this I'm that I'm something else so uh, it's probably best to not get involved in if there's somebody else's site gonna be promoted on my channel I think it should be me promoting it to be honest but um, I'm not gonna take down the, the post that someone's put up that's just stupid because basically what they're doing is promoting this other site because they're doing um, daily live videos to uh, to help out through this um, through this awful time we're going through which is exactly why I'm doing these videos and building this tank is to try and give people something to to watch which was one of the nice compliments I had a guy said his wife's got he said Enders he's got nice Niger's modeling bench so <laughs> there's a compliment if ever there was one so again as I say we only need to make sure half of these are good so um, we can just choose the best the best six and have them and then what we'll see is instead of seeing that great big hole now we can actually see we've got a, a blank face which if you look at your references you'll see that's how it should look so what I'm going to do here I'm just going to brush some Mr. Servicer on thinly and then I can sand it around afterwards just to get it looking good so I'll do that off camera you don't need to see that and um, it's basically the same stuff as I've used on here right so <clears throat> they're all done now with Mr. Servicers on them and they can all dry and get sanded down these are all drying out and they'll get sanded down as well um, so looking back in the instructions we've, we've actually been doing this bit here working on these parts looking back I've now got to fit these end plates to the um, to the actual main hull but obviously because I'm finicky about painting stuff I'm gonna paint this area here and then around this area here with the uh, green paint to make sure that I get the um, the full coverage and then we'll fit those um, with all this in the next part and I'm also going to actually go in and I'm going to paint the ends of these shock absorber tubes so basically I'm going to paint in here on both of them so we've got the outer is here this is the outer this is the inner so I'm going to paint in all around here on them and I'm going to spray upwards in there to make sure the end of that shock absorber's got it and I'm going to paint around this end here and then when it's all assembled I'll do the same when I assemble these units here um, when it's all assembled and all together as a complete unit like this what I'll do is not fit the wheels and then we'll spray the complete unit after we've I've, I'm gonna have to spray inside these tubes around these spring areas here but I can't do that now because obviously I'm waiting for everything to dry and I want to basically put something together get this video out 
So I'm going to paint the, the bits I can't see on, or the bits that will be blinded off on the shock absorbers, um, and then we can assemble them. Um, and then I'm going to get all this built up once the Mr. Servicer has gone off, and then we can go on and assemble this and all these areas in here, which won't see paint because you won't get the paint in there. We will they'll be green already. So um, I'll get that done, and then I'll come back and show you what I've done. And there we go. You can hear the extractor going in the background there. I decided to stick the sprockets onto some tape, paint the back of those. Um, so that's their first coat. Then these um, panels here, the uh, front end panels, um, shock absorbers, as I say, I've painted the, the ends of them, which is the area you won't get into once they're built. And also the end here, which obviously will be inside this tube. So I've also done the ends in here and I've sprayed up in there as well. So when they go together, as you can see, there's the bit that's inside there is painted. So that is that done. Um, well, also because I had some paint left, I decided to paint the back of these these bogey uh, bearings as well. So basically, that is that. Um, I'm going to call that a day for this part ten. Um, I was hoping to get the shock absorbers assembled, but obviously I need to let the paint dry. So in part eleven, we will come back and do this step here. I've already put those on. Um, I thought I was filming it, I didn't have the camera on. So I've already put those on. Um, we'll do this, we'll get this brass shaft in there um, and we'll fit those and then we'll get the whole hole painted. And also we'll, um, I'll probably do the painting off camera. And then in part 11, we'll actually assemble the shock absorbers and we'll do this assembly here because in the moment as it is we're waiting for this Mr. Servicer to dry on there we're waiting for the Mr. Servicer to dry on there so I'm going to need to put another coat on there by the look of it so um, I won't sort of bore you with watching me do that three or four times so I'll get that done off camera and uh, I'll see you for part 11 and we're going to get all this put together so um, thanks for watching um, please stay in do what the government asks you to do and protect everyone around you. Happy modelling guys, I'll see you all soon, bye.